this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how a simple Stirling engine works. The Stirling engine is a fascinating device that converts a temperature difference directly into mechanical work. This is a simple one that runs using just a small temperature difference. Hot water near the hot side and room temperature on the cold side are enough to make it work. So if I put it on top of this cup of hot water, it will be able to run in just a minute or two. While we wait for it to heat up, let's see more about how a Stirling engine works. Let's start with an airtight cylinder. Sometimes this is filled with a gas such as hydrogen to maximize efficiency, but ours will just be filled with air. When the cylinder is heated, the air pressure inside will go up. When the cylinder is cooled, the air pressure inside will go down. Now we'll add a small cylinder at the top with a piston. If it weren't for the piston, this would be a hole in the top, but the piston makes it airtight again. The piston slides up and down as freely as possible while keeping the cylinder as airtight as possible. If we heat the cylinder, the air pressure will increase compared to the outside air pressure pushing the piston up. If we cool the cylinder, the air pressure will decrease compared to the outside air pressure pushing the piston down. Let's add a displacer. The displacer moves the air to the top of the cylinder or to the bottom of the cylinder. Notice the gap between the outer edge of the displacer and the edge of the cylinder. The gap is big enough to allow air to freely flow around the displacer, but small enough that most of the air is displaced to the top or bottom. Now if we heat one end of the cylinder and cool the other end, we can use the displacer to quickly heat or cool the air inside and move the piston up or down. With the displacer at the top, the air moves to the bottom and heats up. With the displacer at the bottom, the air moves to the top and cools down. Now let's link the piston and the displacer in such a way that the piston and the displacer drive each other. Notice that the displacer is at the top of the cylinder when the piston is at the halfway point. The air is at the bottom of the cylinder so it will expand and push the piston up. As the piston reaches the top, the flywheel momentum moves the piston back to the halfway point. Now the displacer is at the bottom and the air is on the cool side at the top of the cylinder so the piston will be pulled down. As the piston reaches the bottom, the flywheel momentum again moves the piston to the halfway point and the cycle begins again. Okay, let's give it a try. We have to give it a boost because part of the cycle requires momentum. Notice that it's running counterclockwise. One interesting thing is that if we reverse the hot and the cold sides, it can run in reverse. But you may have also noticed that Stirling engines don't start right away. There has to be a sufficient temperature difference between the hot and the cold sides before it'll run. So in this case, the bottom has to get cooled down a little bit. Stirling engines are not widely used, but they do have some appealing characteristics. They're quiet, they're efficient, and they can take advantage of any heat source, including renewable sources such as the sun. At its core, the Stirling engine simply takes advantage of the expansion and contraction of gases as they are heated and cooled. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.